At street level, New York City is bricks and concrete, pigeon droppings, and congested thoroughfares. But zoom out or look up and you'll see it. New York is the premier skyscraper city in the world. New York's skyline is instantly recognizable, and yet it's changing every day as the city continues to build itself up. And the women and men whose hands place the pieces and whose legs climb the columns know just how risky a business it is. I Googled it, and it said that it was like one of the most dangerous jobs in the country. But building here comes with its own particular set of challenges. New York has subways underground that you have to be careful of. We have adjoining buildings. New York is much more congested than some of the other areas that I've worked, you know, so there's a lot more that has to be taken into account. There's a lot of pre-planning that's involved from everything from where we put the hoist to where we put a crane to how we do things, where a tower crane in this case is. All that takes, you know, it's months of planning. There's never enough space, ever. And yet, New York's ambition is insatiable. There are so few places left to build in New York. You have to create land in this particular instance, right? Or you have to take something down. Skyscraper construction is a team sport. And on the job sites of New York's tallest new buildings, the city's skyscraper raising prowess is on full display. This is how NYC builds its skyscrapers from bottom to top. New York is both the kind of original skyscraper city, but it's also the kind of the continuing evolution of the history of the skyscraper that you can see play out here. The term skyscraper dates back to the 1880s or so, but it had precedent in things that were very tall, and that's what it meant. It meant the topmost sail of a, of a sailing ship. It meant a particularly high top hat that a man might wear, a stovepipe hat. It meant um, a, a horse that was particularly tall. So. That idea of a silhouette against the skyline is the thing that people think of in their mind's eye when, when they hear the word skyscraper. So not high rise, not tall building, but skyscraper gives you a sense of verticality and of a kind of singularity of silhouette. And the skyline is a whole bunch of verticals interrupting a horizontal plane. Over the course of history, Technological advances and economic fluxes have worked in tandem to change skyscraper construction as a process and a concept. Okay, so here, they're setting the curtain wall on what we call the crown, which is the area above the roof. So they have a monorail system up around the top of the crown, and they pull the panels off of a lower floor and vertically they set them. Facade work at 2 Manhattan West, a 58-story office tower, was coming to a close in April 2022. So they pull them up from one spot, and then they walk them over, and then they set them in place. So we are about halfway, a little more than halfway done. Again, you can't be as scared of heights, right? But the work starts long before a single beam is secured. You can't even start shoveling ground until you have your design completely worked out. You know exactly what the building, how strong it is, how tall it is. Builders in New York play by the city's rules. Strict building codes enforced by the city's Department of Buildings set the parameters for what is possible. You have a bunch of ideas and you start to work through them. I mean, architecture takes time to figure out. 99 of your ideas don't work, and you just keep working through them for the one that does. Plans for the Brooklyn Tower, the super tall mixed use building that stands as the tallest in the borough, came together quickly. Pretty early on in the process, we had this idea of the interlocking hexagons, and then you could see the way the setbacks kind of go up in a spiral. In the early stages of a build, the glimmer and glamour of a spot on the skyline doesn't exist. At 100 Flatbush Avenue, a 482-foot-tall skyscraper passed New York City's extensive permitting process and is now in the early stages of construction. 
We need an excavation permit to do the excavation. We need a supportive excavation permit, which is the, this structure you see here that keeps the road from falling into the job. And we need our foundation permit. Permits protect both the workers on site and the public. In a crowded city, builders will put up fencing and take over sidewalks and roadways, measures that protect people below from the hazards of a job site. Once crews are allowed to work, the excavation phase begins. This means lots of digging and literal tons of cement. 650 cubic yards. All right, so we'll have a pump down at the end. You see the, the chutes that are diagonally coming in from the roadway. We'll pour concrete into those, and then the workers down below will help spread it around. So we'll go through somewhere around uh, 16 concrete trucks in an hour, continuous nonstop until we finish the pour. New constructions in prime locations boast easy access to New York City's extensive transportation infrastructure. But during the construction process, a nearby subway line is a liability. We're standing on top of a subway tunnel right here that you can see is right along the, along the roadway. You also have some existing infrastructure, so there's a lot of work that goes into, you know, getting your permits, getting your sign off, getting people to check to make sure that you're, you know, that isn't going to be a problem. Proximity to a subway line means that crews cannot let the building settle. The building generally will settle, not a lot, but I mean, they'll settle anywhere, you know, from a couple of inches or, or, or so once you start loading on top of it. So when you're building a high rise, as you start putting the weight of the exterior shell and everything on the building, it'll come down a little bit and settle to a final resting point. This foundation has a design, a settlement reducing design, about 150 piles that are drilled into the ground. And what that does is, when I mean, you can think of it as a, just a bunch of individual sticks sticking up. And when you try to push down on that, all of them by friction are stopping that building from moving down. Subways and train tunnels are a common obstacle for NYC builders. The builders of Manhattan West especially can attest to that. This was one of the very first sketches about in, on this project. As we had the opportunity to really look at the sites over train tracks, one of the very first questions was really about we have to create land and how to put these buildings on top of this. Train lines were a selling point for the builders of 2 Manhattan West, a complex decades in the making that sits in close proximity to Moynihan Train Hall, Penn Station, and the Port Authority bus terminal. New York is short on one thing, land. And while the city has expanded itself over the years, space is hard to come by. To make construction possible, Builders had to get creative. Yeah, when we showed up and met with the railroads, you know, the first thing they said was, no problem, you could build here. You've got two hours every other Sunday. And we're, you know, building a very large complex. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do that with a, a two-hour time frame. So we came up with this system where we made a custom piece, a gantry crane. The bridges consist of 16 decks made up of 56-ton segments. They were built and assembled while thousands of people passed below the active site each day. And this gantry crane would assemble segments of precast concrete next to each other and then post-tension them using steel cables, um, creating a bridge. Then it would lift the bridge and then in two hours on the overnight, it would slowly lower that 240-foot bridge or span into position. If we couldn't do this particular system, of installing bridges, we'd still probably still be down there. It'd probably taken more than 10 years, using two hours at a time, trying to put foundations and steel and columns in. Working through New York's characteristic obstacles requires a unique set of skills cultivated over generations by the city's famed iron workers. You know, people say that, you know, your job doesn't define you, and it doesn't, you know, but something about being able to build buildings makes me really proud of myself. And just knowing that, like, we left a mark. You know, like, we're making a difference. We're building New York. As an iron worker, Kasha is a member of Local 40, a group that puts recruits through a rigorous training process to prepare them for work on construction sites. So we're structural iron workers, that big heavy steel, the bridge work. We do a lot of that work. So there's not a lot of uh, what people might consider light duty. Pretty much everything we do, you need to have some strength and some durability. 
I get these cuts on me and the scrapes on me. Like, but like I said, I love working with my hands. I love my career. I wouldn't change it for the world. Workers weld, climb columns, walk beams, and transport tools and materials. The job comes with built-in hazards that make vigilance a prerequisite. It's fun. It's also very dangerous, and that's why we have to stay safe. Like, it's so important, you know, and luckily in school, they teach us how to do that, you know, how to, how to make sure that we're doing the next right thing, looking out for our partner, looking out for ourselves. It's a three-year training program. It's pretty competitive to get into. We do our recruitment process every two years, and on average, we get between 3,600 and 4,000 people to pick up an application for 200 spots. So it's kind of like getting into Harvard, I would say, for the, for the building trades. Yeah. Almost there. Keep going. Skyscrapers are perhaps New York's most visible form of change. Most people think that the skyscraper gets taller and taller and taller, and that somehow the motivation for the building is you know, technological or it's ego. It's driven by a desire to, to, to create the tallest buildings. We occupy tall buildings because they're an efficient use of land, because there's demand for the space, because there are many uses that make them practicable. The city's newest, tallest buildings add shapes to a skyline so familiar, contributing form and function to a city that already has it all. New York City's willingness to juxtapose comes through in its architecture. Newer, taller buildings coexisting with those that predate them. And for those who build them, the process itself is often childhood dreams come full circle. I'm used to being on job sites, tiny job sites, you know, like a one bedroom apartment job site. So when I got into the union and there were these huge buildings, um, you know, I walked in and I was just like, whoa. For me, it seemed like it was like big time, you know? I'm a kid that grew up in the boroughs of New York City. I remember the first World Trade Center being built, and I had a model of the Trade Center in Lego, and I, and I did it, and that together we've been able to make a mark on that skyline is an incredible achievement. I'm, I never take it for granted. I'm excited about it every day. Something about being able to build buildings, it's, I can't explain it, you know, just leaving this huge mark. And nobody will know it's me in like 100, 200 years. Nobody's gonna say, oh, Tasha put in this beam. They're not gonna know, but something about just helping build New York just really just drives me, just really drives me. A job in New York City construction comes with constant potential to climb. And with its skyline ever evolving, New York City will never be finished building.